Hey folks, this video is about five systems that are great for running a horror game. I'm going to start off by suggesting Bluebeard's Bride. This is a uh, feminist horror game and uh, it is based on the legend of Bluebeard's Bride where uh, he gets married and tells the bride, uh, you can go anywhere in my house, just don't go in this one room. Of course, eventually she goes into that room, discovers the corpses of his previous uh, brides, and then depending on the ending, um, she either gets away or gets killed. Uh, this particular game focuses on the ending where she dies. So you go into <laughs> playing the game knowing that the bride, which all of the players are playing the bride, dies. And the way that you play the bride is that each player kind of plays a different aspect of the psyche. Uh, oh. it, yeah, it uses um, a rule set that's very much based in the Powered by the Apocalypse. Mm. Um, one interesting thing about the, the uh, game mechanics is kind of no what, matter what you do, mm. it's not going to go well. Even if you succeed, <laughs> there are going to be consequences for your success. And I will say this is a game that uh, might not be for everybody mm. because it really does focus on systematic social as well as physical violence towards women. Mm. Um, it does utilize an X card as part of the rules, um, so there is that safety mechanic there. But it's a game that is much more actually the horror is for the players because you know what's coming and you kind of are aware of what's happening to the character a lot more than the character is even aware. And the reason it really works um, and really plays into horror is that idea of like when you're watching a scary movie, oftentimes you as the audience member are aware of what the bad thing is or what's coming. Like we know Michael Myers is going to pop up or we know Chucky is going to kill the babysitter. Yeah, um, but the the character in that story is not aware. So it, it plays into that aspect. Um, and especially I think if you enjoyed the Invisible Man reboot, mm, mm. this is going to be one for you because kind of similarly, like yeah, as an audience member, you know... The Invisible Man is somewhere. Uh, yeah. You don't necessarily know where, you don't necessarily know when, um, and you get that as a player because you know no matter what room you're going into, there's going to be some kind of terror there, but you just don't know exactly what it's going to be and whether oh, the cool. um, uh, staff of the house are going to come to your aid or make things worse. Oh, cool. Bluebeard's Bride is really a one-shot. Mm. Um, there is some replayability uh, because, you know, if you have a slightly different group or people play different um, aspects of the psyche, uh, as well as you might run into different rooms. So there's going to be some variation in it. Um, but especially once you've played as the groundskeeper, I don't think you can really go back to playing as the, the player mm. because that element of uncertainty is uh, lost once you've read through the rules of the groundskeeper. So just keep that in mind. And hey, if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe because we make videos here every week about tabletop RPGs and our other geeky interests. All right, let's get back to the scary stuff. The game that I want to talk about for horror is Tales from the Loop. And I think it's a great game if you really like sort of adolescent horror. A mm. lot of the like... 80s slashers that dealt with um, teenagers and tweenagers, or if you really liked the movie It, either like the classic or the remake of it, I think it works really well for that. There's just enough of nostalgia factor and the fact that even though the game has alternate future reality tech, it's set in the 80s, and so mm -hmm. there's communications limitations oh, that you nice. get to put in because so much of horror is about miscommunications and the unknown. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier when you can't just Google something real quick on your cell phone. Um, and so I really like it for that. I also like it because the mechanic system is rolling D6s and you, you're not doing a lot of math. You're just looking for a success. And so then it's easy to know, okay, we succeeded in this. And you usually only need one success to move forward. 
it streamlines the mechanics of the system. And so it, it streamlines the mechanics of the, the horror. Mm. And I think that some other systems that are out there, um, they get bogged down in the math and counting this and adding that. And for me, that takes away from um, scary moments, jump scares, oh, yeah. reacting in a way that maybe doesn't make tactical sense, but it makes sense for a scared 12-year-old. Um, and so I, I like that D6 just looking for the success that's there. Um, plus, it's really great to sort of craft those scary stories that scared us as kids um, and, and put those in there because you get to sort of relive that childhood uh, fantasy of those uh, what goes bump in the night mm -hmm. or out in the dark forest or the you know the the serial killer that's on the loose and your parents are out of town and you have to protect yourself so yeah tales from the loop i think works really well for horror and do you think it works well um either or both as a one-shot or a campaign? Um, I think that it works really well for a one-shot, and I've sort of run horror light one-shots with it. Um, but I think that you could absolutely craft it as an ongoing, maybe a short campaign, and it still, and it still works really well because it's just that ongoing story of we don't understand it and it's out to get us and we're kind of in a hopeless situation mm. doing the best we can against impossible forces. And I think that that's at the heart a lot of horror movies and books and things like that. Okay, so if you are a fan of A Quiet Place, 10 oh, Cloverfield yeah. Lane, 28 Days Later, that kind of post-apocalyptic horror, I think you're really going to like 10 Candles. Mm -hmm. Premise is that you are playing, you know, 10 days after the event has happened. The world has okay. been plunged into darkness and they, them, um, are out to get you. And you're oh. similar to Bluebeard's Bride. You are playing the last days, hours of your characters' lives. And the cool mechanic with this mm. is it's played, um, you're supposed to play it in a dark room with only the light of 10 tea uh, tea light candles. Oh, yeah. And at the end of each scene, whether you succeed kind of that scene and it naturally wraps up or you fail, ah. um, you blow out one of the candles. Oh. <laughs> so like your world is literally getting darker as things are looking darker and bleaker for your characters. Yeah. yeah. And see. it's it, uh, the other mechanic that ties in with the candles really well um, is your player's have a just pool of dice that you draw from, and your pool of dice is equal to the number of lit candles. Mm. And the GM's pool is equal to the number of unlit candles. Oh, so. so as you progress, it gets harder and harder and to harder succeed. to succeed. Yeah. Well, and I like that this, like a lot of games that are good for horror, everybody is buying into the premise yes. at the beginning. You mm -hmm. know, like, we're not going to make this out alive, which I think is cool because then it lets... It gives players the permission to make those horror movie mistakes that in a game where you're trying to win, um, you, you don't want to allow yourself to make those mistakes. So yeah. I think that that's really cool. Yeah. And to kind of get you out of maybe a few of those mistakes, you can burn, uh, you write uh, pieces of your character on like note cards or like pieces, pieces of, of their their yes their personality <laughs> like, yeah. not like an arm yeah a vice a virtue <laughs> yeah. um and you can choose to burn that piece of paper to get a re-roll or a certain um uh, abilities yeah. so it's that like well i can only do this once because once it's burned it's, it's gone. gone plus the theatrics yeah. of that is yeah. really cool um and this game is a one shot yeah but it has a lot of replayability because the um, book gives you 25 different modules to run. And you kind of, uh, the players and the game masters, create the characters together at mm. the start. You also create them together at the start. Uh, the game master kind of picks which module that kind of gives it a bit of a theme sure. um, and some direction. And then you create statements at the beginning of each scene that helps set what that scene is going to be about. So you could play it with the same group, even running the same um, module, and have a very different game each time. That's cool. A big thanks to all of our patrons, but especially to Alicia. If you like what we do and you want to have a direct hand in helping us make these videos, then head over to Patreon and check out the perks of being a patron. All right, back to the video.
A system that I really like for horror is World of Darkness, um, the New World of Darkness, or whatever version it is we're looking at. Uh, but the New World of Darkness, and specifically the Hunter expansion or the Hunter version of New World of Darkness. And I really like it because this game does such a fantastic job of balancing the, the mechanics of a game that works for horror, because again, it's um, just looking for successes, not mm. doing a bunch of math. Balancing those mechanics and then the books, the, the core rule book and the hunter book set the feel and the tone so incredibly well. It's sort of our world, but through a mirror darkly. Um, everything is more dangerous, a little less trusting. Um, plus, there's real monsters that are out there. Um, and while you're playing as when you create your character, uh, and character creation is quite a lot more streamlined than a lot of other uh, more RPG uh, action and tactical games that are out there. But when you create your character, I mean, you're really just a person, at least in, in the hunter version of it. And that's great because then the monsters you're facing really are overwhelming odds. Mm, okay. um, and I think it works best in a horror game if you're playing what's known as a cell, which is sort of the, the smallest... Um, least powerful group of hunters who are aware of the supernatural world and monsters and they're just protecting their neighborhood think um season one of supernatural Ooh, okay is really that um and so it you know it takes your whole group of four or five people and if you're really lucky maybe you can bring down one vampire um but that's scary and that's horrific i also like it because there are um additions and there's other rules where the monsters can go from being like a simple dangerous home intruder to the uber villainous um, Jason Voorhees, okay. you know, or just a serial killer that is a normal person, but super creepy, like someone from Hannibal, uh, and take them all the way into like the sort of supernatural Jack the Ripper, oh. who seems to appear and disappear and escape from a locked room. So for the players, it can be like, oh, we think that mm -hmm. it's just a serial killer, but then that horror of like, wait, this isn't, this isn't a normal yeah. person. What's going on? And the game builds itself really well for those strange, creepy little things. A lot how you talk about in how to build suspense, oh. where something's not quite right here. And by giving your players the book to read through and having everybody buy in, because that's so important with all of these mm -hmm. horror games, um, buying into that this world just isn't quite right. So yeah, hmm. New World of Darkness, especially Hunter, is I think really good for, it can stay pretty purely horror, or you can take it into action horror if you want to. And Hunter is, you know, for an ongoing campaign. You can certainly have little modules of that campaign as your Hunter Cell goes out, uh, but it is something that you can have a long running campaign. And while your characters get better, I don't think they're getting quite more powerful. So you have that power level creep that turns it into just pure action. And we're going to wrap it up with Dread. Uh, yeah. This is a game that you can play kind of any kind of horror. Mm -hmm. It works well for <laughs> classic horror. It works well for like, um, Cthulhu, dystopian, dystopian whatever. space. Yeah. Um, and the really cool mechanic with this is you play using a Jenga tower. So anytime yeah. your character wants to try something that's outside of their normal wheelhouse, because I like when you create the characters like. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying like it's um, if you're a mechanic and you want to hotwire a car, you just do that. Yeah. You're not rolling a D20 every time you think you want to try something like, you know, with Pathfinder or D&D. Mm -hmm. But if you're a mechanic trying to hotwire the car and the monster mm -hmm. is pulling the door off, you may have to pull a tile to see if you can do it under the stress and time. Yeah. And the mechanics of it is really, for the most part, I'd say 90% of the time, you're just pulling one little tile. Mm -hmm. um, but then as you go, of course, that gets more difficult and there's that sense of um, suspense and the real world suspense of like, the tower's starting to shake. Yeah. As you get further in the game, mm -hmm. it becomes harder to pull those tiles. 
you can choose to push the tower over, which is your character sacrificing yeah. themselves. And it, and once the tower falls, whoever's character was pulling the tile yeah. or chose to push it over, that character is dead. Yeah. Or some other way out of the game. Yeah. yeah they're, they're gone. <laughs> um, uh, so it is very much a one shot. Uh, yes. I think it does have some suggestions of maybe how you could turn it into a campaign. But I, think, I don't especially think especially with well. horror, yeah, it's a one shot, yeah. Mhm. The character creation is very simple. You ask 10 questions um, and the book suggests that you phrase them in ways so that you build in the elements that you need. So, okay. for example, you might say, "What is your character's addiction?" because I need the characters to all have an addiction that oh. I can draw on as a weakness because horror works really well when you have flawed characters. Oh, so like if you're running a horror game of dread in a, a mental institution, you'll ask me those addictions so that you can use them as scares later. Yes. Oh, uh, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I really like Dread, and I've run it a couple of times. We've played in it a few times. Uh, one of the games that I ran was for for you and mm -hmm. our friend Brad, and it was a werewolf horror game. Um, not like Werewolf the IP. It was they were both campers. Yeah, yeah. You were on we're vacation. Just people. Yeah, just just normal people, and they were camping. Um, and it was something was after them, and they thought that you know, oh well, is it another camper? And then they saw wolves, and then it started getting really scary and stuff like that. Um, but because the Jenga tower can kind of go anywhere, we actually played it outdoors um, at night. Like we started the game at nine o'clock at night around a campfire and built a campfire <laughs> and um, we didn't add any wood to it. So as the game continued, it got darker and the campfire got lower and it was getting colder and we had all of the outdoor sounds. And even though we were playing in our backyard, like it started getting creepy yeah. and, you know, and so that's a really fun thing that you can, uh, it's, it's mobile. So you can kind of take it to a place that fits that horror theme and setting that you're playing in. So it's not just sitting around your kitchen table being like, ah, be scared <laughs> while the coffee machine is gurgling. A couple of honorable mentions for horror systems I think that are worth saying is the Malifaux system mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Call of Cthulhu. I think that they do a lot of really cool things to have that uh, creepy otherworldly um, outer horror. Uh, but for me, they fall a lot more strongly into action horror where okay. we're action and fighting back and the combat is a little bit more front and center, um, which you may disagree. And it always depends on how you and your group runs it. But um, I think that those are honorable runner ups. Those are five of our suggestions for uh, horror games to yeah. check out. Do you have any systems that you really like playing horror games in? Let's uh, talk about it more in the comments below. So thanks for watching this uh, scary Halloween episode. We're having a lot of fun doing these. And if you like these more themed episodes we've been doing, please let us know here or on our Twitter and we'll start to put some more of those together. But until next time, I'm Ryan. I'm Dawn. And this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. Bye. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because we make new videos every week and subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>